Mr. President, Mrs. Obama, let me begin by expressing my pleasure at being here tonight for your gracious hosting of the Nordic leaders and for the warm welcome you have extended to Iceland. We are honored to be here as allies, as partners, and most importantly, as friends of the United States. We bring with us the warm greetings, greetings and good wishes of our people. Relations between Iceland and the United States have always been strong. Our initial and ongoing defense partnership has blossomed into a broad friendship that includes deep commercial, academic and cultural ties. And yes, that does sometimes include artists in swan dresses. <laughs> Our friendship is based on solidarity and cooperation on some of today's most complex problems. Building on our 2013 meeting in Stockholm at today's summit, I am pleased we have recognized the excellent, excellent Nordic-US cooperation and shared achievements. I'm also pleased that we have committed in our joint statement to further deepen and broaden our cooperation on several key interna international issues. Our world views and interests align. We share the same values, respect for freedom and, and the democracy, an unshakable commitment to justice, human rights, and the rule of law. We are committed to the principles of gender equality and women's empowerment. We work together for peace and security. As we near the end of your time in office, Mr. President, I would like to use this opportunity to commend your leadership, not least on the challenges of climate change, the conclusion of the Paris Cl Climate Agreement, and on the Arctic. The population of Iceland is a thousand, smaller, thousand times smaller than that of the United States. As you might expect from Viking descended Northmen, we do not hide behind our apparent lack of superpower status. <laughs> what we lack in manpower, we make up in volcanoes. We are still figuring out how to aim them. <laughs> However, so, so bear with us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to propose a toast. To the President, to the First Lady, to the people of the United States of America and to the enduring friendship between our peoples. Skål. Mr. President, First Lady, dear colleagues from my neighboring countries, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Once I was seven years old, my mama told me, go make yourself some friends or you'll be lonely. <laughs> Those lyrics are from the Danish singer Lucas Graham's number one hit song here in the US. And I'm a lucky guy because my predecessors didn't wait for this song to be released before they actually followed this advice. And therefore, I'm so privileged and, and happy to be here tonight, surrounded by friends from the Nordic countries, but first and foremost, you, Mr. President, and your fantastic and dedicated wife, Michelle, 
and all of your fellow Americans. The United States is truly one of Denmark's closest friends. The first time you invited me into the Oval Office, Mr. President, you said that Denmark is punching above our weight. It made me proud. It made us Danes feel a little special. Now, some six years later, I understand that not only Denmark, but all the Nordic countries punch above our weight. Uh, but nevertheless, I, I'm still proud. Uh, and I truly believe the same goes for my colleagues. So, you can count on us, and you know that. And, and that's probably why we are all invited here tonight, because we punch above our weight. And we will continue to do so. And after tonight's splendid dinner, we will definitely step up into a whole new weight class. <laughs> the ties between the United States and the Nordics are strong and go way back. As you said, Nordic Vikings crossed the Atlantic centuries ago and discovered amazing America. And ever since, millions have, and ever since, um, millions left our rainy and windy countries, looking for a new start in America. Many of them settled in uh, Minnesota. Uh, I guess the weather there made them feel right at home. <laughs> and the Nordic settlers uh, took part in making America bright and, and beautiful. Scarlett Johansson of Danish descent is just a living proof of, of that. And the Swedes and the Finns and the Icelanders did their part too, contributing to the gene pool that gave you Julia Roberts, Matt Damon and Uma Thurman. And the Norwegians, well, they gave you Carl Rowe. Uh, <laughs> among many other things. <laughs> so I guess it's true to say that we have had a certain impact on America in, in many different ways. So the good question is, can we Nordics still contribute to America? And the answer is as simple as it is famous. Yes, we can. <laughs> Nordic architects like Bjarke Ingels contribute to transforming American cities with projects like the New York Dry Line and the redesign of the Smithsonian here in Washington, based on a vision uh, of making urban areas more livable, smart, and sustainable. Both the US and the Nordic countries try to set positive standards for the world of tomorrow, taking the lead, so to speak. And speaking of taking the lead, speaking of leadership, it is easy to see the importance and value of your leadership, Mr. President. So without interfering in American politics, I can truly and without a doubt say that you have been the best president you have never had. Now your presidency is coming to an end, and I have something to admit. I'm very fond of uh, Donald, too. Uh, I support him as a president. He's really smart, shows great leadership skills, a true visionary. And I'm, of course, talking about Donald Tusk, uh, our Polish president of the European Council, <laughs> which, in your absence, is the best president you could have. Well, being a role model is not always easy, so I've heard. But, but you, Mr. President, have come to uh, represent a dream for millions of Americans and people across the world. We share a common vision of securing good, affordable health care to all, and I greatly respect your achievement in this regard. Your leadership was also key to the Paris Agreement on Climate Change last year, 
and, and we continue. Well, both of us were disappointed after Copenhagen, but, but then we worked hard, and finally in Paris we succeeded. And we continue our work together on the Green Transition. And recently, Mr. President, you swept the White House in the rainbow colors. Being the first country on Earth to allow same-sex partnership, Denmark admires and supports your fight for diversity and equal rights. Nevertheless, your presidency is slowly coming to an end. So Congress will probably try to block most of your initiatives in the time to come. I guess that can be frustrating. Believe me, being leader of a very small minority government, I know that from personal experience. And if I may, uh, allow me to give you a piece of personal advice. When I get too frustrated, I laid off steam by cooking. And I can recommend that. And if you do take my advice, I think you could be inspired by the new Nordic cuisine. It already involves uh, edible rarities such as moss, bark, and living ants. <laughs> but maybe you could be helpful in our search for a receipt for lame duck. <laughs> Mr. President, uh, you are a great friend and ally. Soren and I will always be very happy to welcome you and your family in Copenhagen. And Denmark would, as all the Nordic countries, I believe, be honored to receive one of the most inspirational and charming figures in America, along with her husband, of course. <laughs> so, so, dear Michelle, dear uh, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, let me propose a toast for the strong relations between our nations, the very special cross-Atlantic friendship between US and the Nordic countries, to friendship. Skål. Cheers. Dinner is now served, but uh, I think we've just identified uh, the next comic for the White House Correspondents' Day. <laughs> Enjoy, everybody. Thank you. And there's one area where Donald's experience could be invaluable, and that's closing Guantanamo, because Trump knows a thing or two about running waterfront properties into the ground. 